charity workers say thousands of school children in the West Midlands are missing out on regular healthy lunches, either because their families don't qualify for free school meals or because they aren't claiming them. People who are in work, people who are on uh, benefits, people in low paid work, uh, zero hour contracts, mums, single people. Britain's food bank charities have condemned a food poverty scandal across the world's fifth largest economy. Single parent households were twice as likely to visit food banks compared to the general population. Many British children go to school hungry because their families are suffering from severe poverty. A million? Yeah, half a million people, people so 500,000 now are relying on them. to Waitrose which is at Ricelip, Ricelip and Ickenham branch of Waitrose and we're going there because when we became a charity um, the Trussell Trust introduced us to Waitrose. Waitrose wanted to pair up with another um, Trussell Trust food bank. They chose us because we're the nearest one to them um, and their customers leave their um, donations in the box there. The store are very good to us. They empty the box during the week once it's full and store the items in a trolley in their warehouse and then we pick up whatever's been stored and the items that um, are still sitting in their box. Is this like the normal amount of donations you'd receive or have you got a lot more this time? No, this is similar to what we usually have. Um, all kinds of things, tea, cereals, tins, pasta, milk. Milk is always very much needed. Even sanitary products we receive too, which are also much needed. Hi, uh, I've seen Doris here for a long time and how much she gives time for the community and she does a beautiful job. Um, very proud of her and um, I like to do exactly when I retire to help community. Seeing her here smiling, um, very happy to see her every Tuesdays. Uh, very dedicated lady and does a fantastic job. I'm Doris Hughes and uh, I worked for many years as a consultant to the oil industry working for them as their personal assistant and that was the last 10 years before I retired. I live in West Drayton with my husband Kevin. We have uh, four children, two of mine and two stepchildren and 12 grandchildren. As part of the work at my church I'm part of the charity group and when we heard that there was discussions about the possibility of a food bank um, I was sent along as the representative and became very involved quickly. We became a charity and as a charity I also became a trustee as well as a volunteer. I used the skills I have to do the secretarial work that was needed, writing the minutes, organising for different people to come and talk to us about what might have to go on if we become a food bank. I organised the warehouse side of things. We're very blessed to have a warehouse that is donated to us by a local organisation, a company. Each week I go to various supermarkets to collect donations that the, the customers have left for us. So I go and collect all the goods and they are brought in each week. That enables the distribution centres, we have three of them, to have food available whenever they need it for the clients. Well, as I'm retired, uh, I use my free time to work in my community and that means helping at the food bank. How does it make me feel? 
Well, on a Tuesday, when I've been collecting the food at Wake Froze very early in the morning, I feel pretty tired. Um, and the tins of food that I collect are very heavy and the bags are very full because people are so very generous. But it's very much worthwhile because if we didn't have this um, for, the, for the people who need it, we wouldn't be working the way we should be. And I'm very blessed. I have food in my cupboards, I have money in my bank, I don't have the issues that other people have that I see. I see the poverty around me all the time for lesser for people in, in a lesser good position than I'm in and I'm very blessed that I'm in the position that I am so I offer this back to my community. We never know when we might be in that position ourselves or we may have already have been in that position. I see the need on the streets where I am, I see the man sitting outside Tesco's begging for money and everyone passing him by. I see the lady sitting outside Asda who has uh, the big issue and if you're lucky and she sells a few big issues then she may get enough money to buy something. And I see um, the people sitting along the road with their sleeping bags and they're all around us, not only in my locality here in West Drayton, but all over the place, in London especially, you see them wherever you go. And it's something inside me said, I have to give something back. I'm very fortunate, I have a home, I have a family that care for me and that I can care for. But these people often have no family to care for them and don't know which way to turn. I'm James, I live here in Hillingdon. Uh, I'm a photojournalist by, for my job, which means I'm out and about a lot on the streets, which is kind of how I got involved in the food bank and the food side of things. I'd actually been unwell myself and was awaiting benefit decision at the time, and there was no income, so that meant I couldn't feed myself. Um, I was referred to the food bank who gave me two bags of food, which sustained me for the week until my benefits had been provided. I know a few other people that themselves also needed food bank and without that they wouldn't have survived either. So I decided that once I was on my feet I was going to get involved more myself. So food bank um, donations are often provided by members of the public who have put items into a basket that's quite often at the outside of a supermarket or um, local churches, local community groups collect the food which is normally then taken to food bank headquarters, separated into individual parcels and distributed to people who need it via referrals from the council and job centre etc. So the first time I went um, I was quite nervous, I hadn't been anywhere like that before or had to really ask for help before. Um, I wasn't sure how I'd be treated um, but thankfully for me they were very welcoming. They, asked me what my situation was, they were empathetic and even provided some advice on where else I could get support, which was a great help because at the time when things are hard and you're, you're struggling, you're not always able to concentrate on where to go to get the support. So I think Food Bank and the people that run Food Bank are quite important, not only to provide food, but the advice and comfort they provide to people. Um, I think it's important that Food Banks exist because there's a underlying issue in society at the moment that means a lot of people are going hungry on a regular basis whether that be through lack of work or you know other problems such as drugs alcohol social problems it's very difficult and it's on the rise people are struggling more and more and places like food banks are becoming a necessity i think the general public they need to be making their voice heard and saying that it's not acceptable that food bank is doing this that the government needs to step in and provide support 
and also to donate food to the food bank. Get involved to donate time if they can, because without volunteers, the food bank can't exist. And without people putting their voice forward to their MP and councillor and saying, we need this support for people, it's not going to happen. So my advice is get involved, you know, help out, donate, give your time, whatever you can do. That's the only way to tackle the issue. <laughs> in, in regular, so we've got, we've got one pound coin, we've got a pound in fifties. We've got multi fifties, sixty p in tens, ten, twenty, forty copper, twos and ones, one fifteen fifty p's, and eighty, sixty, fifty, and then. Any client who comes in needs to have a red voucher mm -hmm. for us. If they come for the very first time and they're not sure about food bank, we do a little shopping list for them on a form like this. Then we signpost them to the correct place so they can get a voucher. They can come to us and we can direct them to the right place. We also run on a Monday our free advice centre, which is done by doorway. They're a separate entity doorway but they give free advice to all our clients they can also give right vouchers for them the food that we give is enough food for three days it's an emergency food for three days so it's not a weekly shop at the food bank it's enough food for three days and the pick list where we do the shopping list the client can choose what they want from that and that was set up by trestle trust so it's a very balanced diet of food for the clients. Um, and today we're open from two till four. We set up our, our hall as a cafe style. So when the clients come in, they sit round a table. One of the volunteers will go and speak with them and they will talk through the process with them. We give them a cup of tea and biscuits. And on a Friday, we also do soup and toast for them. Um, a thing people don't think about for food banks is toiletries yeah. and nappies and washing up liquid and shampoo and when you are request that they think well that's not food but if you put yourself in that their situation if they can't afford food they're less likely to afford shampoo and uh, sanitary towels deodorants all of those things cost a lot of money the main thing is to be friendly warm and welcoming is what is our is our mm. ethos yeah. really here the reason i came to volunteer was i was very aware that we had poverty on our own doorstep um, i actually was in jerusalem on pilgrimage and i saw all these starving children and i thought we have that where i live i need to find a way of helping and it was my sister-in-law who was one of the founder members with Doris and Richard, who alerted me to the fact that we're an open food bank. So I do it because I know we can help people in our own area. And I love it, absolutely love it. Well, my name is Emily Moss. Um, I'm from a place called Thornaby, North Yorkshire. I've lived in Maidenhead for 25 years this year. I have three children, Chelsea who's 24, Charlie who's 20 and Sam who's 7. I hit hard times, uh, really hard times, through um, domestic violence and social services coming involved in my life and putting me into temporary accommodation which was a really hard step in my life. My two other children don't live with me, um, 
my daughter's just bought her first house, my son lives with his dad, but I'm sole carer of my seven year old. I'm unemployed, um, I moved on to Universal Credit and I went through uh, any money for four and a half months. I had no choice to go and see a gentleman called Lester Tanner at the food chair who helped me. I'd have probably had the worst Christmas ever because I had absolutely nothing. No money to buy presents for my little seven year old. I was embarrassed to go there, really embarrassed. I help on a Wednesday to make the bags up for the homeless and everybody else with Lester. Give something back but I'm still in a position where I need the help and support of Fuja. In the community, um, I've met some beautiful people who just take time and effort out of their own time, like Lester, well, I can't, I can't even describe into words, I can't even put it into words, how amazing he is. So food share is absolutely, massively important to society and part of being involved in it now because I've taken it out of it is looking at people that actually care about others before themselves it's, it's brilliant you know it's community it's a part of I don't know about who we are as people and caring and putting back something into what we've taken out of and without that people would go hungry and um, yeah, it, it's not, it's not, it's not good. Benefits are going down. People are struggling because food's going up. Some families have two working parents and might have three or four children, but they've got a mortgage to pay, cars to run, school uniforms, etc., etc., etc. Their outgoings are massive and they can't afford to buy food, so they go to the food chain. These are not people that are on benefits like I am. I've tried to get a job, but what I need to work, I'm a single mom, within some school hours. I'm fine, I've got a job interview on Thursday, I can't wait. <laughs> I think it's, well, it's a blessing, because without it, I'd have had no Christmas. My son have had no Christmas. Lester and the team bought us both Christmas presents and a turkey and vegetables. We'd have had nothing. Absolutely nothing. These cards mean a lot to me. Um, first one it says, Dear friend, please know that they are people thinking of you and hoping um, for everything a good thing for you, Nick, kiss. This one says, I know it's only a small pack of toiletries, but I hope it makes you smile and you enjoy them. Please know that we're thinking of you and sending you big hugs on your way. Love, Laura. Now these cards were put into bags of toiletries that meant something to me. Um, the cards mean more to me than the toiletries because somebody out there is thinking of people like me. My name is Diane. I am the Chair of Trustees for the Youth and West Street Food Bank. We were seeing a rise in people becoming homeless. We were seeing a rise in people that were accessing the advice centre that just happened to be running uh, within this place and at St Matthews at the time where people were coming in with multiple issues and desperately needed some sort of quick solutions for things like they just had no money for food, absolute emergencies, what can they do? 
There is a food bank in Hillenden, but it wasn't actually meeting the needs of this local area. And so they end up coming to the food bank um, where we are able to actually help them with food. Nationally, across the whole country, there's been a real rise in people needing help from food banks. Um, but if you're speaking about our area, um, we have seen, I mean, for example, I've got here, within l the last year, we have issued 1,000 food bank vouchers. The Advice Centre is a bit like a Citizens Advice Bureau where people can come in and they might have uh, problems to do with their finances, with debt, with, uh, with their benefits, or they might have housing issues, housing problems. We have had some clients who's been having food bank um, for months and months. Um, and, you know, and, and that in itself can become a problem. Because we have a high number of people who are immigrants who need to be able to access food through us because they're, they're living on this last money I told you about. Um, but as the numbers are growing, actually, can our food bank sustain that to be continually giving out food on a weekly basis? Because the numbers are growing, particularly with the universal credits um, coming in and things like that, more people in need. So we have to look and say, not, not, not just Paul and I, but the, the, the people from the food bank and say, how long can we sustain weekly giving these people food? Oh, yeah. 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 So, 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 so,